Good morning, everybody. I just wanted to bring you into the kitchen real quick this morning and give you a snake bean update. This is the one that I have let sit on the vine and harden up so we can cut it open and see what it looks like. I broke the end off. I noticed the end was starting to turn bright orange and I know that the inside turns orange and becomes pasty like a tomato paste. Um, so I you probably let this go a little too long because this part's clearly getting a little rotten. But look at the color in there. Jeez Louise, look at this seed. Can you, um, look at the color, it's insane. It's so bright, I absolutely love it. So anyways, I'm gonna turn the camera down and we're gonna cut it open, we're gonna see what it looks like. All right, this sucker is absolutely huge. Uh, it's nice and firm and dense. I don't know if I, it's, it's still got a little give to it, but you can definitely feel it's not spongy like the thinner ones are. So, you know, total length, it had this little tip here on it. Um, that's what it looked like complete. So I pulled out this little seed from the inside. Um, it's interesting because this looks nothing like uh, the seeds that you plant. This is flat and soft, you know, um, and mushy. I guess, you know, maybe when it hardens up, it becomes the little, uh, little tiny nugget that I'm used to seeing. Um, and like I explained in my other video, the outer shell of the seed gets very hard. So this is definitely one that you wanna nip with toenail clippers and let it soak in some paper towels um, to, for better germination. All of this, this is the peppers that we picked just this morning when we were out in the garden. So they're starting to really come in. We got some late season tomatoes getting a little smaller, but it's right as these go out, these come in and I got a whole nother round of snake beans coming in this year, much better harvest than last year. So I'm really excited about this. Let's see, in the best way, we're just gonna, I don't know if I should slice it down the middle and open it up. I guess that's what we'll do. Let's see what this looks like. I cannot wait to see the color inside of here. Wow, look at that. That is beautiful. I'm gonna have to bring you in closer so you can see this. Wow, look at this. The colors are so beautiful. You just don't see colors like this in the grocery store. Oh, I hate to cut this thing in half, but it's probably the only way I'm gonna be able to split it all open. Wow, I'm really debating, should I try to save these seeds to plant more next year, which I definitely wanna plant more, or should I just go ahead and scrape it out and see how it works? Um, like I said, supposedly you can um, use this like a tomato paste. So how funky and awesome is that? I'm not actually sure, I'm assuming this, you know, this is a gourd, so I would think if I just let it continue to dry that it would harden like a regular gourd, but honestly, I'm not sure. I had a really hard time finding information about growing these when I first started growing them, which is exactly why I started doing these videos, um, just so there'd be some information out there, at least based on my experiences. Oh, look at that, so you can see the orange starts to go away as we get up here into the top part of the cavity. So I'm assuming it'll be like that the whole way now, once you get to the thinner parts. We'll find out what an adventure. Adventures in snake beans. Oh yeah, okay, so up here in the top, this is pretty hard. I wonder, we'll see how this tastes. One thing that's interesting is the smell has evolved. It's not nearly as strong. Um, you can still get a hint of it, and it's kind of, um, I don't want to say aged, but it's its shifted a little. You know, it smells more like a vegetable type smell as opposed to that just rich, you know, kind of nutty smell that it has when it's younger. Oh, mmm, it's good. It's very crunchy. It's dense like a, um, hmm. Dense like a cucumber in a way, but with less moisture. Very crunchy, like the outside skin of a cucumber. And here I thought at this stage, this part would be too hard to eat, but it's actually really delicious. Well, we're gonna try to eat one of these seeds. Oh my. Wow, it's really good. I don't even know what to relate this to. It looks disgusting. It looks gross. It looks like a, uh, a hemorrhage <laughs> or, or something. 
I don't even want to say what I think it looks like. I'm just going to eat it. Mmm. Mmm. That one was hard. Oh, yes. Look. A viable seed to plant next year. Nice. Well, that answers that problem. That question, I suppose. Some of these. Yes. All right. We're going to be saving this for seed. I'll be chopping this part up. Mmm. By stir frying it for dinner, serving it like a crunchy green side. This orange pasty coating on the seeds has a really, mm, it almost has like a sweetness to it. Very mild sweetness. Really, really good. Such a unique and incredible vegetable. I mean, look at this. This is what I love about Baker Creek seeds. Just things that you'd never find anywhere. Look at this so cool it's like a work of art mother nature never ceases to amaze me anyways I want to, it's almost like you can take this and stuff it can you imagine stuffing this and baking it hmm we may have to try something like that just as an experiment anyways i hope you guys found this video interesting please like subscribe hit the thumbs up button if you're into growing weird stuff like me and i hope you really consider giving snake bean a try my two best tips is it definitely is going to do much better in a place with lots and lots and lots of sun. There's some things like certain plants like tomatoes that really require a lot of sun, but you might be able to get away with planting them somewhere else and still get a decent crop. I have planted bees in, you know, lower sun and I got a crop, but it made, I mean, I've got literally 10 times as much just by putting them in a high, high sun area. They are pollinated by moths. We have a lot of hummingbird moths around here that do a really great job. And um, the other thing is definitely, definitely, these are the kind of seeds, because as you can see, big chunky seeds here with hard shells. You're gonna wanna nick them and uh, soak them, or I prefer a paper towel, you know, and a Ziploc baggie method um, to get them germinated. They are a little tricky to germinate, but once you've got them going, um, you will not regret it. It's definitely an amazing, really unique vegetable. Um, definitely one of my favorites to grow and so cool to watch it in the kids garden as it, you know, curls and twists like a snake. If you haven't seen my other video on snake bean, check it out. It's right here and down below. Um, you'll love the way, you'll, well, let me put it this way. It'll be really obvious to you why this is called a snake bean. Python gourd, snake bean, snake gourd, all those things. Definitely one of my favorite vegetables of all time. Thank you guys for coming back and staying tuned. Take care, and I hope to see you soon.